Hello, I'm Shelley Irwin, and welcome to Ask the Chef. Pepper us up with questions, and of course, we'll cook you up some answers. The numbers, of course, at the bottom of your screen. How fun. We are live, and tonight we have Chef Left Town. Less, uh, le Look, I can't get your name right. It's okay, Len Town. Len Town in from American Char Smokehouse and, of course, Bar Len. Goodness gracious, I'm just going to call you Chef Len. What are you cooking tonight, my well, friend? Well, I, you know, we have a lot of stuff. Uh, There's a lot of stuff that we feature at, uh, at the restaurant. Um, I, I really try to utilize uh, really fresh ingredients. We bring a lot of fresh meats. Uh, we have brisket, wings, uh, pulled pork, uh, ribs and a lot of different fun sides. Right. But, uh, and before we even get into this, mm -hmm. first of all, I wish our viewers could smell this. this you are awesome a, I know. into the grill zone. Very good. Who is Chef Len? So, so Chef Len. Uh, That's you. Yeah. I, I spent <laughs> a little time in uh, Arizona uh, working on my culinary degree from uh, Lake Cordon Bleu. Spent a little time there, worked for Ritz Carlton, Phoenician Resort, different, a lot of different yeah. resorts. Um, moved from there to Miami, worked in Miami for about two and a half years, and then moved back to Michigan. I'm from Michigan originally. Um, love food and beverage. Uh, I've owned a restaurant prior to this one. <clears throat> it was a breakfast lunch place. For about seven years, I went and worked for New Holland. And from New Holland, I, I had this opportunity to kind of jump up. And uh, <clears throat> it's been quite fun. Uh, a lot of barbecue, a lot of fresh ingredients, really taken. It's an 1800, I think it's like 1816 or something uh, barn that they moved yeah. and put on 31. It's amazing space. So I want to match the food to the space, and it's, it's beautiful. And we're looking at char, smokehouse, bar, lot, uh, a really cool niche you've got yeah. for us. Yeah, it's really fun. I mean, I don't know when you, anyone doing the kind of barbecue we're doing. I mean, we're doing totally dry rub. So everything that we do, um, like our wings come out, they have a dry rub on them. Um, the ribs come out. There's no sauce. You have to add the sauce, and our sauces are over there. But uh, it's a lot of fun. It's all fresh ingredients. I use a local farm. I think we talked about this a little bit on your uh, on your radio show. But local farm. Yeah. The soils are great in Michigan. Why wouldn't you use local? We use craft uh, craft uh, beers a lot. Local, a lot of local ones. To cook with. Or yeah, to drink yeah. While you're cooking. Actually, we okay. make a, a phenomenal <laughs> deep fried mushroom oh. that has a batter on it, and we use. Um, we actually use the Sun Dog, which is a New Holland beer, yeah. uh, for that. So it's quite nice. Yeah. yeah. All right. So throughout our 28-minute uh, show, you are going to cook for us. So give us kind of the setup here. Okay. So, like. so what I typically do, and I, I, if you don't mind, if I go over to the, the bring, bring the it on. Okay. I've got the all sauce right. To let's let's me. let's do this. <laughs> uh, I'm going to put the the rest of the pork down here. So um, what I do typically, I, I we do a dry rub. So. What Before, is a dry rub? Okay, so dry rub typically, you know, it has components of, there's some acidic with lemon pepper, there's some garlic, onion, uh, brown sugar, some cayenne, depending on what you want to do with it. It's outstanding. Yeah. Uh, so typically they dry rub that. I'll dry rub them uh, a night before, wrap it in uh, plastic wrap and let them sit in the cooler overnight and let the um, okay. actual stuff react with the meats. But so because there is a chemistry that goes on. There like is, this, yeah. Right? You actually, um, it actually will seal up the outside and actually keep the protein um, uh, molecules or the moisture in the meat. Mm. It's great. What do you have here? Okay, so this is a two-pound rack of ribs. Most restaurants are using one and a quarter. We're using two and up. So okay. we try to use a little bit bigger um, rack of ribs. Uh, when you cut them in half, obviously it's a one-pound rack, so that's a lot for someone to eat. So half racks. People, oh, I'll just have the full rack, and then they come in. They're like, "Oh, that's a little big." Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. So this is a fresh product coming yeah. in, and then what we do is I'm going to take my dry rub that I've already had prepared. So this has um, mm -hmm. a little lemon pepper, a little bit of brown sugar, some really nice. If you smell it, okay. oh my gosh! Let me smell that. Oh, okay. The, the, yeah. Yeah, it's good. So, stuff. so typically okay. you have to rub it into the meat. You know, that's a that's a lot of what what this is. I mean, as far as like take, you're really just taking a lot of care and passion and putting you, it in. Would you do both sides? Absolutely. Okay. And what, what happens, right. there's a, typically a membrane yeah. that sits on the back of here and you pull that off with a towel and then we'll go ahead and rub that on the inside and you're just allowing mm -hmm. it to really let every piece. And this know. is good to do almost immediately before uh, you, our uh, grill? Yeah, typically uh, um, before our smoker actually. Okay, so we do this before the smoker. Oh. Oh, so you've got a raw product, okay. and we, we're going to put this in the smoker at, in our restaurant, and we're going to take that and, and go for probably four or five hours, depending. 
Um, let me clean up a little bit. Oh my gosh! And then so we go four yeah, to five hours. Chefs clean up as yeah. Go, I have to clean as I go. Chefs. I'm a little uh -huh. okay. This is really nice okay. and clean. Yeah. So um, so typically we'll we'll put the rub on, let it sit overnight, and then we'll put it in the smoker. We use. Uh, Purpose of the smoker is to infuse awesome smoke flavor into the meat, and so your slow. It's a flavor. It's a flavor. Mm -hmm. It's it's a technique of um, slowly cooking the meat too. Mm -hmm. So um, it's it's a it's a I kind of it's lost art, at least up here down south. Mm -hmm. I mean the barbecue competitions are everywhere. Yeah. So I haven't gotten into that yet. Next year you we will, will do some. You will. Yeah, it's fun. So taking the meat, we go into the smoker. Mm -hmm. We got the fire mm -hmm. going. Hickory chips and some other blends of special chips that we use. And then um, we'll let it go for about uh, four hours, four to six hours, depending. Just make sure it's got a real rich um, smoke flavor. And then we'll pull it out. And then we'll put it in the cooler. And we'll actually cool it. We'll cut it in half. And then we'll get ready for service and then put it on the grill and finish it like we did here. So it's pretty simple. Would you do this then with a chicken breast Correct. or a chicken wing? Yeah. It, and Still it, would do the same? It'll modify uh, flavors. Some, so like our chicken wings, um, I don't put the brown sugar in the chicken wings because you're cooking them twice. If you are to do that, you're going to take the wings, you're going to put them in the fryer because that's what we do. Okay. So we'll take them out of the smoker, cool them, then we'll put them in the fryer. And when we put them in the fryer, if that's in there, it'll actually burn them. So you want to omit that. Now, we put a special seasoning when they come out. It's a dry rub. So there's that, that season's only known to you, that the ingredients? Yeah, okay. I, I'm sorry about that. To, yeah, we'd have to there's ship a couple, you or something. Yeah, I, I could, no, I could, I could tell okay. you, but okay. I know you don't, you don't tell a lot of people anyway. <laughs> no, so. not at all. But uh, anyway, so that's, that's that piece. But yeah, okay. so depending on the type of meat it is, we, use a, we do a pork butt. Um, we rub the pork butt, put it in the, the smoker. Jeez, that's a, probably about an 18-hour smoke. They're big, I mean, just awesome. Fat caps on them. The more fat, the better. This is not in good for dieting. Right. Okay, I'm sorry yeah, about gets, that. Got to splurge every once in a while. Once in a while. One out of seven okay. days. Now, back to this, and then obviously, I don't know if you're going to have to flip those or squirt those or tell us what's okay. happening here, but, but this would um, uh, feed one or two people. Probably, here. well, knowing the way you eat, oh, well, that's it would probably feed me. 10 people. Okay. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, you know, two people, probably. Okay. Um, what and what sauces? Is this where my sauce goes? This on? is where the sauce is. Okay. So, like when we pull these off um, the grill, and uh, and I'll do that right and now. And while you're doing that, we're actually yeah. going to take a caller's question. Caller, what's your question for Chef Len? Hello, thank you for taking my call. Um, oh, well, I'm sure I brought, hear you. Um, I... We're probably going to have to get you typing that on the prompter. Our uh, our sound may not be with us, so get the uh, get the question and um, let's get her typed up. Cool. So probably wants to know where you're located. Where are you located? All right, 9104 U.S. Highway 31. Great. West so Olive. Go ahead. You're f you're f how, how do you flip? How do you know when to flip? Well, I know because, okay, there's certain reactions. You can see the, the actual fat begin to glisten, and it's really starting to kind of react. You called that equifact? First of all, what's this? This is brisket. This is a uh, long cook meat that we use. It's beef products. Some okay. people don't know what brisket is. Mm -hmm. um, if you if you pull on it, it pulls right apart. So it's a very yeah. tender. If it's cooked properly, it's extremely tender, and it's done properly. I promise you that. Go ahead. Where does this come from? From the the, uh, the front um, chest the, plate of the of, right mm -hmm. of the of the uh, cow. Mm -hmm. So this is really good. I'm sorry. I'm, it's okay. Getting excited about get, getting this no, out there. No, you gotta like your own product. Uh, and and it is it is fatty, but yet this right. is where uh, this is where it's where all the flavor is. You, you right. Do your, you do your thing. How long did you know? How long do you grill this? So these I bring back up to temp. Most briskets you see, they pull them out of the smoker, they slice them, they serve them. And mm -hmm. what we do is we pull them out of the smoker, we cool them. We slice them and then we bring them back up to temp so that you get that char look across. Why do you cool? Well, it sounds like cooling oh. is important. It, it is. I mean, you want to make sure you don't A, and you get someone sick, and B, that's important. Uh, you, you just want to make sure that you cool them properly so that you let the proteins relax again. And right. then that keeps the moisture in there. If you're, there's a lot of techniques in, in cooling. If you cool too fast. Again, back to that chemistry and so that's what you learn. Yeah. Uh, all right, see that question there? What is a good way to tenderize steaks? I'm using a George Foreman. 
Um, First of all, what do you think about the George Foreman grill? Um, you know, it's it's what we it, use. I think it's a I think it's a good product. Um, tenderizing steaks. So tenderizing steaks. Typically, what I would do, um, you know, here's one of the the. It's not so much the tenderizing. You can use a jacarter, which is a mm -hmm. it pierces the meat, takes the mm -hmm. fat, and actually pierces through the meat. You could put it in a um, a salt solution, um, which is called a brine. Um, but typically, uh, what I would do is I would um, actually just let it sit out at room temp, then grill it. So you got about an hour at room temp before bacteria, you got like four hour period before bacteria grows. So you want to set it out at room temp, let the proteins relax, and then put it on the grill. Don't go right from the freeze refrigerator to the grill. Gotcha. So. We're upset our tummies. We are going to take a quick break, show you what's coming up next week. Right now, ask the chef. Next week, ask the paleontologist, and of course, our, our paleontologist, uh, Paleo Joe, will be sharing his expertise. Right now, ask the chef. We've got Chef Len Town in on behalf of uh, how he spends his day. We are cooking up a, a storm, and here's a little bit of the product. I know we're getting a close-up of all this good stuff. And, and Chef Len, um, you are now starting to uh, do a little flipping here. What's happening? Right. So um, most of the most of the meat's ready. It pretty much come off. Um, so we get it up to temp. I mean, you typically want to make sure that your internal temps reach 165, typically, to, to, to bring them back. That's a, that's a second cook, not am a first cook. I, am I sticking a thermometer in there? You would in the over? fattest part of the meat mm -hmm. just to check it. But you always want to ma maintain a 165 reheat, okay. um, not a 165 first heat. Does that okay. make sense? So you can cook something the first time. You can cook it to a, whatever temperature you want. Is that for both the chicken and the Correct. second Correct. Yep. Yep. Piece Anytime you do any type of reheat, you always want to bring something back up to temp. If you have to heat it, it has to get to 165 in order to kill bacteria. Also, when you're cooking with chicken, that's a, that's a key too, is to make sure the chicken reaches 165. And you have rest times and all that good stuff, yes. but that's a whole different show. Do you want to talk about the, um, the, is that pork in there? It is pork. So what we did was, pardon me, I just put a little bit of a little uh, vinegar. It's a vinegar, it, yeah. yeah, it's a vinegar sugar mixture, mm -hmm. and what I, it, these are typically what we do when we, like if you're doing showmanship, if you're going to show off on, yes. it's just a squirt bottle, and, it, and we use it when we sell our ribs because our ribs don't have sauce on them. So we want to make sure that they really look sharp going out. So, and it adds to the, the flavor of everything. Yeah, so we have the pork, which is done, and we're going to go ahead and put this over here. It's really a nice, moist product. Okay. Um, Peek at that. All right, yeah, so you've peek. already cooked this That's pork. That's right. That one's already cooked, um, and it was just bringing it back up to temp. And we'll talk about your sides in right. a second. Yeah. So um, anyway, so this is where we're at on all the um, all the meats. I mean, it's a lot of fun. The smoking piece. I mean, you could do anything from pecan to mesquite to you know bourbon barrels. What does I, that mean, bourbon barrels? Well, that's that's one of my tricks. Okay. Uh, okay. A bourbon barrel, if you take it and chip it down, um, you get the flavor of the bourbon when you're smoking. Okay. Um, when I was with New Holland, we, were, we actually took dragon smoke barrels and huh. we used that to smoke with and it was pretty awesome. Yeah. So. Are you anyway. ready to talk a little oh, yeah. bit about we, um, your any, sides? Anything you're ready to talk about, yeah, Shelly, well, I'm in. Okay, come over okay. here and, and point out these sides and um, flip them up so we can Pardon get them. Pardon me. A, I um, do well, you're, you're working hard. Okay, so, okay. Um, so what we have is a potato salad, right? This is a Dijon red skin mm. potato salad. These I see some um, egg here. A little bit of egg, uh -huh. um, green onions. Yeah, wow. Yeah, not bad. Okay. Um, so this is a, the potatoes actually come from uh, Crisp Country Acres, which is a farm that we use. Um, really a lot of flavor in, in these um, potatoes, okay. or at least in the potato salad. Coleslaw, please. Coleslaw mm -hmm. is a spicy, we like to call it a tartar slaw, which is confusing. People think it's like a tartar, mm -hmm. but it's just a mayonnaise-based. Um, it has some cayenne in it, a little bit of seasonings, um, some special stuff that we do to it, but it's really a fresh salad, once again, using coleslaw, um, using the cabbage from the farm. Um, okay, local. 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 And then we have beans, which we smoke in-house. We use the smoke to do these. Tell me how a, that works. Okay, so the sugar that's sitting on top of the, the beans um, when you're smoking, so you go for a long period of time, you want to stir it like every 30 minutes, and you're okay. stirring in the smoke into the beans, and then it re- uh, seals another top on there, and you stir that smoke in. So, but we take our beans. It's about a four-hour process. Um, 
bacon, onions, caramelize those up, toss them in. A couple different, we use ketchup as a base, and uh, really a nice, that's a nice product. Um, I love beans, so. Party you know. prettier size. Yeah. Now next is some special stuff. Right, right. so yeah. these are also from Crisp Country Acres. Um, they're the, the um, pickles that we do in-house. These pickles I had on a Cuban sandwich today, okay. and it, it was one of, I took our pulled pork, okay. I took a brioche bun, I took Swiss mustard and um, the pickles, okay. and oh, oh Lord, they're so... You're not sick of your own cooking. No, I love it. Right. I love it. But uh, yeah, you might want to try it. It's a cucumber. It is. Mm -hmm. A pickle and cucumber. Mm. Mm, so good. So those are, those are some of our sides. We also do some really fresh, uh, like a pico de gallo bean salsa. There's a lot to it. It's this is about going to fry my, my eyes, but that's okay. okay. No, I'm totally fine. It's pretty intense. Hang on. We're going to need to take a quick break. No, no I don't okay. think so. Let's talk okay. about these sauces. All right. So so we have our sauces that we do. In, these are all mm -hmm. homemade. We're 98% homemade. I don't do the buns and I don't make the pasta. That that's the great. only thing I don't do. That is great. So 28. 28 is, and the numbers represent when the states actually joined the union. Okay. Okay. So the eighth state was... Was the uh, Carolina, mm -hmm. so that's why it has. Where's the Michigan? We don't, I don't. Is there? I don't have ketchup out okay. here. Okay, all right. But uh, is that the Michigan one? I yeah. don't even know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, so uh, we'll start with number eight, which is a Carolina. It's a mustard-based uh, vinegar um, flavor, and it really goes well with like the brisket and the and the ribs. Um, and then we have number sixteen, Kay. which is here, and then that ha that's a sweet. That's a Memphis style, so Tennessee. Um, it's really quite nice. It has a nice um, sweet finish to it. The 22 is the number one sauce that we have. And, and these go on our Yeah, these are on our tables. Yeah, they're on our tables. Uh, so we have all these sauces on the tables. So oh. everyone can kind of enter. They can do whatever they want. They Would you recommend more. us not use sauce, though? Well, I mean, don't I mean, we want a, the flavor, man? I, I don't want to lie to you. Okay. A lot of people will actually yeah. tell me, Yeah. hey, guess what? I don't even need to use any of your barbecue yeah. sauce. But the 22 is an Alabama sauce, the white barbecue, and it actually has a lot of component, components that would be um, similar to the barbecue sauce. Um, a guy in the 1920s did it for chicken, and it goes really well with the chicken. And then for the last one, this is a 28, which is here. This is a Texas style, so it has a little bit of heat to it. Really nice. And then today, we had one of our farmers, local farmers, brought, mm. he just dropped off five pounds of blueberries and said, wow. here you go. So we made a blueberry and oh. bourbon uh, barbecue sauce, and that goes really well with pretty much everything. Mm. So. Take me back to, again, what's happening here. We're, okay. we're basically ready to uh, we, probably we're, dig yeah, in here. So they, yeah, mm -hmm. they're all done, ready to go. Um, the, you, can, you know, the best thing to do when you're doing ribs, if, you're, if they don't do this. Do you want them to do that? Yeah, I want them to be a little, not hard to come off, but mm -hmm. I want them to hold their rigidity wow. somewhat. But, you know, you go to eat these. This Camera crew is going to have a, a they're, they're, I know, I see them. They're all, somebody, they're standing <laughs> in line right now. So, um, the wings are fun. I mean, we're, they're really good sized wings. Um, if if one, um, could you serve those without the follow-up fry? I mean, are those ready right. to Right. I mean, is that something we do? Mm -hmm. No, that's not the, what, what we're doing in, in the mm -hmm. restaurant, but it is possible. Someone yeah. said to me, hey, you know what? I don't want to fry these. Mm -hmm. can, you, can you grill them? Absolutely. I just did that here, and they're, they're working out great. They're coming right off. I mean, you can see them. They're, they come right apart. Wow. Beautiful. I mean, look at that caramelization. Did you say you get your chicken local? We do. Crest, uh, Crestwick Farms. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And there's some other purveyors that are working on getting us some. But uh, we're using FarmLink as uh, one of the local guys. He's trying to bring it all local in and try to help us all out. Because we can't go out to farms and get everything all, all the time. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to have someone else brokering that. And so FarmLink is actually going to be a nice one for us uh, yeah. down, the, down the road. What kind of grill do you recommend we grab at home So do this? Yeah, so I use yeah. Weber. I have a Weber at home. I have a Weber Q here. Um, they're, they're, Weber's are really good. They're, they're actually been in it for a long time. And I think from a grill standpoint, they heat mm -hmm. the best. You know, you're really mm -hmm. looking to get your temperatures up to about 650 degrees when you're grilling. I think a lot of people, they're, you know, you're not getting a reaction quick enough off, the, off this. And I only say this from mm -hmm. a grilling standpoint. Mm -hmm. Put the meat on there, let it go. A lot of the guys, you know, like to work on like the car. Always, yeah, got a peak. Where would your salmon fit here? Where would it fit? Or, or where would your, your fish? So if I was, it would right in the hottest spot of the grill. Okay. You want that because you have a little bit of fat in that one. Mm -hmm. It'll actually release really quick. Um, it'll re release quicker than what chicken does. Um, salmon's great to grill. 
I recommend if you do a salmon to do... You do uh, a rub type stuff on that? You could do a dry mm -hmm. rub on that. Mm -hmm. Same, same, similar dry mm -hmm. rub, actually. Um, but it has enough sugars in it, so you don't really want to over-sugar it. But um, I, I typically will do like a um, butter, like a white wine butter sauce with a little bit of spinach, tomatoes, uh, Kalamata olives, and finish it with feta. And put that over the top of the salmon. What wine would you serve with this uh, meat? Uh, a pale ale. I'm kidding. Yeah. Kind of with you on that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, typically yeah. the, the beers are the ones that are going to mm -hmm. hold up well with, against this. A, a good wine, it would have to be really robust in flavor. Um, it would be hard to find one. Uh, Perrin does a Perrin Black that's one of the best that I've eaten. And then 312 is always my favorite. So. What about grilling vegetables? Yeah. What's, so what's the art to that? Kebab, kebabs, cutting them small enough so that in, and making the, the surface area mm -hmm. smaller so that they actually cook quick. Um, the longer you leave it on there, you're gonna, you're, it's made up of a lot of liquid. So when you leave them on for a long period of time, it'll actually start to break down and get really soft and limp. But if you have them smaller and the surface area is quicker okay. to cook, right? So, yeah, that's, uh, that's what I would do with grilling in that aspect. Let's say we can't finish the whole meal. How do we store our leftovers? Okay, so typically take them right home. Put, yeah. them, in, put them in your, coo in your refrigerator. I say cooler. Um, do I wrap them individually? Do I put them in a... When you, typically when you're taking them home, you know, you want to lay everything as flat as you can mm -hmm. and let it cook in a shallow surface or sh uh, shallow mm -hmm. pan because it'll cool quicker, right? More surface area, mm -hmm. it's going to cool quicker than a, everything stored in a small area. You hungry yet? I'm getting there. I'm, I'm having fun with the pickles. The pickles are good. Um, back to, um, I guess, the, the, the sides. Um, do these hold up? First leftovers type? Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. your, your slaw, your potato salad are going to hold up all the beans f for sure. Um, the chips, we have a chips in the, in the black bean, mm -hmm. like a pico de gallo. Yep. So that one may not hold up as well. But um, I think a lot of the stuff we're doing is um, it's just really fresh, and it's yeah. better to eat it fresh. It's, you can reheat anything, but yeah, fresh is but, always the better. Fresh and, and plan for that. We've got about three minutes left. What Kay. else do we need to discuss? Well, I, you know, we're doing a lobster boil uh, August 23rd, uh, one pound lobsters. What does that mean, lobster boil? Who's so I'm going to boil the lobster right. on the patio. We have a Caribbean, uh, someone playing Caribbean mm. music, right? We're doing parent beer and, uh, and 312. So in goes the In goes lobster. the lobster. Well, first goes the, the potatoes, the corn. Yeah. Get that first. Put it mm -hmm. in a cooler, right? Okay. Old Bay, mm -hmm. some garlic. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to take homemade sausage that I'm making. And so we'll grind it and stuff it, mm -hmm. and we'll put that in, and we'll put the one-pound lobsters, little neck clams, and shrimp, and uh, it'll just be a big party on our patio. It's awesome. Okay. I have 60 seats, and we're about 40% done wow. with that one. So. That's August 23rd? Third. Yes. Yep. And where do we stand as far as here we are in our good old Midwest, but is the South really the place to, yeah. to learn from these type of yeah. uh, um rubs and, and well I think I, they've been yeah they've been doing it forever girls. you know um, yeah. and, and um, you know Memphis style you, you know mm -hmm. any, anytime along the south I mean they're just taking meat and they're doing a great job with it and they're I mean they love what they're doing I mean a lot of the guys will do it there's a Saladino smoke uh, out of Ada and this guy does stuff just to do it because he loves it he's passionate and I'm like I found my long lost brother and we're not related obviously yeah, but well, he's, a, he's a great guy and talk to me just a little bit about, and we've got this as a, uh, a rub, but the process of marinating. Yeah, marinating typically is an acid breaking down a protein. Mm -hmm. So um, lemon, vinegar, something like that mm -hmm. to help break down proteins. Mm -hmm. um, so you actually begin to cook the protein. It actually will seal it, and you put it on. Uh, brining would be a method where you're actually trying to pump the, the cells of protein with more water. So that's an, And typically that's like a gallon of water to... Uh, four cups or two cups of sugar, two cups of salt. Hmm. So, and you just put it in the brine and let it go. Again, back to the utensils one would need. Would I need a pretty good knife to do a little cutting? Or I don't think you need a, a good knife. Just maybe a really good napkin. Then what do you think? A napkin and, and a bib. Oh, maybe a bib. A bib. <laughs> a bib to, yeah, a bib would to, be good. Yeah. And lastly, um, tell me about customer service. How? Uh, what makes you stand out? You know, I, I care about everybody walking in the door, and I try to develop a relationship with the people that are coming in. And I love food, and I love people, and I it's just I can't get it out there enough. I really want to compare myself to Chef Jenna, because mm -hmm. I always have to name drop. But we Chef, love Chef Jenna. She's, she's great. She's now. she's mm -hmm. great, mm -hmm. and uh, she does such a good job. And her customer service—it's really what I strive to be like. But I, I 
I just love food and well, I love she people. She said that about you. I'm All sure. right, so in conclusion, we find out more about you. How? Okay, so I have a website getting built still, and with the Facebook right now, I'm either under Chef Len on my Facebook page or uh, American Char has a web, uh, Facebook page. And dinner tonight for us is? Everything here. I'm leaving it all. So Which we have the ri rib. We have, we have the, the dry ribs. rubbed ribs. We have the, the chicken. wings, brisket. The brisket, pork. the pork. You'll take that I'll home take and serve that. that for you. <coughs> yeah, I'm going to yep. take that home for, for your, myself. For yourself, that's scary. And then we and have then potato then. salad, coleslaw, um, the smoked beans, the charbecue beans is what we call them. And you do like what you do, don't you? I do. It's that's, great. That's I, and I thank you for this. This is great. Yeah, yeah this is a good thing. And well, your I'm, team's I'm super keeping, helpful, yeah, too. I'm keeping the coleslaw right. and, the, and the pickles. The pickles. That's kind of scary. Thank you for watching. Take care.